All right, and we are live. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Magandang magandang araw sa lahat. Wherever you are, whatever part of the world you're into. So welcome to our tonight's broadcast. This is entitled Blockchain Updates for Business. This is, of course, in partnership with our partner, um, Bounce Back Network, by the way. And um, of course, allow me to invite in the stage my co-host for tonight, none other than Mr. Joseph Sylvester. Oh, Hello, hey, what's bro. Up, guys? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Say hi to our audience, bro. Hey, what's up, guys? So yeah, this is broadcasted live um, also in the Bounce Back Network channels. So yung mga nanonood sa Bounce Back Network channels, so if you're with us, please type 1 in the comment section. And for those who are also watching, if you are in in our broadcast tonight, Please stay tuned after the end of the broadcast because this is very, very exciting. We will be discussing today, pag-uusapan natin ngayon about sa NFT. Of course, a lot of people have heard about it, NFT, non-fungible token. Pero marami pa rin yung mga nagtatanong. So we got a special guest for this evening. So ngayon para sa broadcast na to, no? By the way, this is also our, ano, that's like, this will be our year-end um, broadcast for our, ano, for our... For our channel and the resistance trader community. So shout yes, out to sa mga, yeah. Shout out to all of our community members watching us tonight. Hi, hi to you guys. And yeah, without further ado, why don't you introduce our guest ngayong gabi, slide? All right. So our guest tonight, I think uh you've had her on uh the, the resistance trader shows uh, a couple times. So our guest tonight is uh Marzo. Marzo is our guest tonight. Um one of the great things about Marzo is that she, uh, I guess, runs her own little NFT community and uh, is involved with other NFT communities as well here in the Philippines. So what's great about uh, Marzo is that um, I think we can honestly say, like, sh she's like, uh, you know, the role model, if you will call it, in terms of nice. uh, how people get into NFTs and understanding what NFTs are all about in regards to the arts. And of course, how to make money off of it. And, you know, she'll guide you through the process. And she's very well experienced at uh, the process part as well. So without right. further ado, let's bring on Miss Marzo. But before that, let's play this quick video. I All guess. right. <laughs> All right. Ayan. Hello, welcome, guys. welcome. Hi, hey. Marco. Kamusta? Hello. Merry okay. Christmas, Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Christmas na tayo. Sorry. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Say hi to all our audience there. Hello, Ayan. Everyone. So, yeah. yep, yep, yep. So, this is our guest, Miss Marso. She'll be help. She will help us understand more about NFT and also, um, especially in the arts because um, yun nga, na, na kwento ni Sly kanina. Our guest tonight is uh, also an artist. So mamaya, we will also showcase her work, her art, para tas pagkukwentohan natin yan dito sa show. But before that, sige, um, maybe Miss Marso can give us a very quick introduction of who she is, what she do, and uh, a little bit background of what she's all about. Hey yeah. guys, so as you've heard, my name is Marcel. I'm an NFT artist and also a collector. I'm doing this full time already, but right now I'm focusing on more of the collecting. Uh, so much has happened right now in the NFT space. As we all know that this space is continuously evolving and it's evolving really fast. Brands are coming in and people, a lot of people are very interested in going to NFT. Celebrities are coming in, influencers are coming in. So it's it's a tough ride right now with the NFT space, but we're still riding it because we know there's something in here that we feel that that it's going to um, evolve the future in a big in a big impact way so yeah uh, i would be gladly to share things with you guys uh yes. but yeah i'm an artist collector and 
uh, I'll give whatever I can to give advice regarding sa art, sa pag-collect, and sa pag ng projects. So, yeah. All right. Sige, sige. Sly, um, yeah. Sly, maybe we can ask um, our guest tonight. No? Very quick lang. <clears throat> ano yung, ano kaya yung nagtulak sa kanya to be part of the, the this um, movement called the NFT in the arts, blockchain movement, etc.? Kasi, di ba, we have our own story of uh, such things. Meron, yeah. well, those people who are actually following my page, our page, the Resistance Trader, knows my story. What's yours, Marso? Ano yung, ano, um, how did you begin understanding, collecting, or de- diving into this space? Okay. Yeah. What made so, you? Yeah. So, at first, I'm an illustrator by profession. No una. So, ito NFT kasi, nabibigay sila ng... Uh, what's that? Pro- provenance sa mga artworks with, with the help of the metadata. And parang sabi ko, ito na yung chance para sa mga digital artists na finally mag- mag- maging ano na kami, collectible or parang lumevel na kami sa mga traditional artists na nagpipainting na kinokollect sila. So, so yung, doon talaga ako na-entice kung bakit ako sumali sa NFT kasi finally uh, yung pagiging corporate illustrator ko, pwede ko na siya Iwan, para express yung sarili kong art. So, I had a few friends who were doing NFT. So, pinakilala nila ako doon. Pero, syempre, as a beginner, nung pisa, wala akong alam sa NFTs. Hindi ko alam yung kung ano yung NFT. Akala ko dati wallet siya. <laughs> so, so yun, inaral ko siya. Like, uh, I dived in and I made a lot of mistakes at first. Syempre, dahil uh, the gen ako doon eh. Up until now, the gen pa rin ako. <laughs> Pero wala akong alam, uh, I just created artworks and I mint and then at that time naalala ko parang uh, medyo all time high pa. Uso pa noon Rare Ball and kapag nag-mint ka 5,000 for mint, pipikit ka talaga eh. Pikit na lang ako para pero hindi ko alam kung mapibenta ba talaga yung artwork ko. So there's this dilemma of you want to try pero hindi ka sure dun sa ginagawa mo. And then yes. uh, after all those failures, uh, I rest and reassess yung ginagawa ko kasi I know there's something wrong. I wasn't selling anything and I'm uh, uh, mas gumagasos ako kaysa sa na, nagkaka-earn ako. So I have to rest and uh, figure out what's uh, what's really happening in this space. And then, uh, ayun, like I, I went on a hiatus for two months pero with that two months, I was creating artworks. I was fulfilling myself as an artist. And then nung pagkabalik ko with Tez, uh, I experimented on Tezos kasi Tezos has a really so small but solid community it's it's much more easier to stand out kasi sa ethereum and we all know na ethereum is really volatile up until now especially now so expensive ayun. kamo ang yes, gas fees ni ethereum when you actually meet yeah. ethereum and most artists nahirapan sila mag magmint da- dahil dito and yeah. so ayun uh once i came back uh ako ng unting success and nagtuloy-tuloy na siya uh, i've got into projects with the help din ng collecting kasi as an NFT artist or as someone here in the NFT space, I think it's not enough na artist ka lang. I think if you really want to immerse yourself in the community, you have to learn what's really going on in the perspective of, of an artist, uh, of a collector, and also as a project manager. So I also work on several projects. Um, like with only uh, Jonathan Mann, which he's a TED Talk uh, speaker. Na hindi pa namin release yung uh, collection namin, but uh, hopefully, hopefully by next year, marilis na namin. And also, I help a couple of friends na gumawa na sa nilang project with um, derivatives. So ayun, I've experienced on creating projects as well, and then with collecting and being an artist. So. It has different uh, approaches when it comes to having that success. Pero all I can say na uh, there's this one goal within those NFTs and that's, I think it's the utility na gusto mong ipamigay sa community mo or give impact and values within your community. So, ayun, right now, uh, dahil dun sa mga projects na ginawa ko, I was so burnt out. Like, uh, nag-hiatus ako for two months. Ngayon, three na. <laughs> Kasi nag-focus sa ngayon sa, sa pag-collect. Pero right now, I noticed that the market has evolved. It has changed. 
dahil nga dito sa mga big brands, sa mga celebrities sa Pua Paso. And we, as we all know that the government is trying to enter as well. Uh, I, I, I've heard na US is trying to regulate uh, crypto and that does so nagkaroon ng pagdip ang Ethereum. Not sure dahil hindi ako ganun ka knowledgeable with uh, crypto pero that's what I heard dahil uh, it goes hand in hand naman crypto and NFTs eh. Pero I think one of the biggest impact is when Nike entered. I think that's one of the biggest triggers kasi uh, Nike is a very big brand na pumasok dito sa NFT space and alam mo yun, as the government seeing that this brand's uh, moving to NFT space, parang paano na yung capitalism, <laughs> di ba? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's really, for me right now, it's really hard to be an artist, lalo na nag sa ako. Pero uh, I've been receiving a lot of uh, help from the communities that I've been, uh, especially with Dead Fellas, Stretcher Dao, uh, Small Verse, etc. So uh, I hope to keep to come back around January with uh, a project of my own. But right now, I'm focusing on collecting because I'm really trying to lurk and observe what's going on in the communities and the projects that I'm trying to collect. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's okay. It's okay. Actually, we're very, very thankful no, for your sharing. Thank you for that wonderful, in- those wonderful insights that you just mentioned. Actually, yeah, I, go I, ahead, Stan. What I would like to add in is... um. Actually, Marzo, a lot of the things that you've said, I've actually taken it to heart in terms of how people view NFTs and the process that people are going through. Now, because NFTs have actually kind of like evolved, as you said, over, I don't know when it started. Uh, Some people say it started with CryptoKitties, but let's just say 2016. Mm -hmm. But now people are really getting into it. And what you mentioned that, you know, NFTs right now is about arts and how people can use the idea or the current idea of NFT as an arts to kind of work for them to kind of like, I guess, make money or things like that. Mm -hmm. But also there is another part of the NFTs that you did mention where it's like, because it continues to evolve, there's more um, utilization for the technology of NFT Mm -hmm. that I think we'll get into later on this show. But I have taken a lot of what you said in, you know, your trials and errors and all that things to actually yeah. come up with a few things of, of our own in terms of uh, James and I. But yeah, yeah, I totally yeah. agree with you. Also, uh, no, uh, there's a misconception with NFTs that NFTs are just art. I think NFTs are not art. It is a technology for art that you use to have that provenance. So you can mint literally anything if a, if you want to mint a bread. <laughs> Good mint of bread. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a technology for art. Yeah. No, it, it's funny that you you mentioned that it's a technology, and uh, I th- hopefully this show kind of like uh, will showcase it a bit later in terms of what else can be minted. When we look at NFTs, because um, I I come from the the developer mindset, yeah, so the programmer mindset that yeah, you can print bread or you can mint bread. That is yeah. true. But the thing is, what makes the bread the bread? It's it's the code behind it. Yes. Um, and one of the things that people tend to just realize, like in terms of NFTs, like, oh, it's just a picture, it's a JPEG, it's a PNG. But when you dig deeper into the other types of picture formats, like SVG, you start seeing it at a data layer. Yeah. yeah. Then you start to realize, I can put some more additional information on this, this object or this picture you know, to make it yeah. more unique. So mm-hmm. again, a lot of the stuff that you share, yeah. I've been taking it to heart. That, that's where the smart contracts uh, come there in. There you go. If you can add a utility on it with the smart contracts. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, very interesting topic, no? very interesting discussion that we're having right now. But before we actually continue, basa muna tayo sa comment section, by the way. And uh, may mga nagpapashout out. Yan, si Mr. John Alabot. Also, si Sir Vincente Perada. Ayan, shout out sa inyo, mga idol. And of course, yung mga, may mga scholars ng ano, may mga scholars ng TRT Guild na nanonood sa atin right now. Uh, si Billy Jo, yan, si Kim, si Tay. Yeah, hello, hello. Si Natchao. Maganda, magandang gabi sa inyo. Yan, thank you, thank you for tuning with us today. By the way, um, mayroong isang nag-comment, this is not us. May, may mga makikita kayo na mga comment dyan sa comment section na nagbibigay doon ng BTC. Just ignore it. We're, we're not giving away anything for this broadcast. 
Um, so yeah, yeah. May mga ano, may mga may mga fake pages. Uh, I don't know if um what Facebook is doing about it, pero just a reminder to our audience who's watching us and na, naka naka ano naka tune in dito sa comment section natin. Wag na wag kayong maniniwala sa giveaway daw ng TRT. We're, we're not giving any, anything away. We're just giving away information, of course, courtesy of our guest for tonight. And also shout out kina Sir kina Coach Reps Lopez ng Musaijen and uh, kay ano kay Sir Vicente Perada. Yeah. Then let's continue our discussion. Ano? So na pag-usapan natin yung technology side of NFT, the smart contracts. Pero maraming nanonood sa atin, especially dun sa bounce back network. Yung medyo um let's call it they're new to this. Diba? Bago sila dito sa pinagkukwentuhan natin. So maybe we can actually discuss a little more lighter about how NFT and smart contract works dun sa, alam mo yun, in a layman's term. Kasi diba, um, pag pinagkwentuhan natin yung NFT dun sa yung level nating tatlo na ng, ng knowledge, medyo hindi natin masyadong ma-share ma- properly dun sa mga audience natin who, who probably might want to know more what NFT is. Pero siguro, let's put it this way. Yung NFT or yung non-fungible token is actually part of uh, blockchain as a technology. Yung blockchain as a technology, let's separate. Meron tayong separate discussions dyan. We have other episodes also in Bounce Back Philippines discussing about that. But let's discuss about NFT as a standard in blockchain. And paano ba yung nagagamit sa arts? Kasi baka may mga nanonood sa atin dito na walang alam sa blockchain. Walang alam sa mm-hmm. NFT. But they are they are artists. Mga visual artists who might want to enter the space. So guess like, mm-hmm. yeah, may, I, I know you're, you're itching to share more about what you would like to, ano, ano, to give away to, to, tonight to our audience. So I guess. will keep this as very simple as possible because I know how I get. NFTs, in a way, is basically, um, well, let's break it down first. NFT stands for non-fungible token, okay? So anything that is minted under the NFT standards um, basically is a data object, okay? It's a data object, kind of like a file, like a, like a picture file or a video file. And within that file, there's a bunch of data in there, okay? But the part that makes an NFT an NFT is what makes it unique. Now, the uniqueness isn't so much what you see visually. The uniqueness comes in the objects like data, like what makes this file unique? Is it because of the picture that you see? That's one of them, but it's really the data held within, held inside that file or the object in this case, okay? So that's as simple as I'll put it for now. It goes way beyond that. <laughs> Yeah, so madaling salita, no? Sly, what Sly is mentioning is that it's a data, metadata, or yeah, data, it's a group of data pulled into a chain or a blockchain. Pero what does that data stands for? That can stand for anything. Yun yung gusto nyo sabihin. Pwedeng value. Like for example, the case ni Marso, who's an artist. She creates or yeah, she creates visual arts and that visual arts is minted into the NFT. And that NFT is a representation of her art. Now, um, ibang usapan if there's a physical art involved. Tama ba, Mar? So correct me if I'm wrong. No? Kasi there are, digi- there, there are several kinds of art. Meron digital, may physical. Now, NFT is mostly digital for the digital art also. But it's correct easy. me if I'm wrong. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Pero pwede rin din si NFT na mag-represent ng physical values if ever, diba? like a physical painting, pwede mo rin siyang imint sa NFT, tama? Yes, tama, pwede. No, yun. Oo. Uh, so, yun. Yun yung, yun yung sinasabi natin na um, yun yung pwede natin i-share dun sa audience natin ng na mga nanonood sa atin. Na non-fungible token is but a rep... Sabi nga, token. Di ba pag pumunta ka sa... Ano ba yung mga... Ano, Mars and Sly? Ano yung... Ano yung mga... Yung, yung, ano yung arcade? Di ba sa arcade... Kailangan mong bilhin ng token, di ba? Para uh, makakuha ka, for example, ng stuffed toy. Para, di ba, maglalaro ka, for example, you get that stuffed toy. You buy a token. Similarly, ganun din to, kaya lang, nasa blockchain siya. Nasa internet, di ba? 
na sa blockchain so may NFT for example Mars so minted an NFT merong meron siyang artwork yung NFT na yon is representing her artwork and that's the value that you can get if you buy or trade the NFT so maraming ano yan eh maraming price ano dito na maraming price play sa NFT so yan yung pwede sigurong i-share later ng guest natin tonight pero yun lang um just to simplify the explanation and um ay ito siguro lahat naman tayo dito we know tayo tatlo we know Axie Infinity no Axie Infinity is an online game uh na based in the blockchain uh they actually allow you to play the game if you have their NFT now that NFT represents a playable character so kung wala kang playable character sa Axie Infinity na NFT hindi ka makakapaglaro So that's actually how it works for Axie Infinity. And similarly to other play to earn or game models inside the blockchain. Ganyan din yung kanila mga flow. So that's NFT in a nutshell. So continue natin naman yung discussion natin about NFT in the art. So yun, um, di ba sabi nga natin may mga, it can actually represent physical art or there's a lot of um, price play inside the NFT uh, space. So maybe our guest can enlighten us more about that. Mm-hmm. Actually, ngayon, uh, it's really hard to determine price with the NFT space. So and daming nangyayari and and syempre, uh, yung nangyayari sa token it applies din sa sa kung ano yung price na nangyayari sa NFT space like ngayon medyo down ang Ethereum. <laughs> so people are pretty conservative when it comes to buying NFTs and with the market and with the open sea sobrang saturated and daming projects hindi ko alam kung ano ba yung good projects sa mga nagro-rug na projects lang so you really have to DIYOR within those this project kapag gusto mong bumili but when it comes to the artist i think it's a different take na unlike before na parang you can just create an artwork and then mint parang ngayon it requires you to create a, a project mismo na parang you have this utility, you have this branding. Sa ano lang naman to, ah, sa, sa observation ko with OpenSea. And then some artists, uh, they prefer to have this curated na website such as yung Super Rare Foundation. Kasi ito yung mga platforms na hindi saturated. And mostly, ito yung mga platforms na art art focus talaga. So, if you're an, you're an artist na you're solely for creating art rather than creating a project, I think, mas suitable sa ito. But, uh, ako kasi, for me, o- open sea is still king para sa akin kasi this is where the whales are. Pero, there's always a downside in a saturated market. Um, it's really hard. Ako, uh, right now, uh, nag-mint ako ng isa and I feel like na you're clawing uh, through that community, through everyone else. Kasi everyone is shilling, everyone is telling about their project. Pero the question is, what makes you think na I should buy your project or buy your NFT, di ba? So it's really hard to determine kung ano ba talaga yung right price for your NFTs. Kasi right now, most derivative projects, they price their artworks na below 0.1. In sense, kapag good projects, project siya 0.123 so it's really difficult to know and as someone na nagmi-meet sa open sea i think na parang with the competition din sa market it's it's kind of kind of hard it's kind of difficult unless na meron ka talagang um let's say like heart evangelista diba she sold her nft around what 17 ETH, i think So, kasi, million, uh, multi-million, yeah. na multi-million na na yun, multi-million pesos. Because she yeah. already has a following and as a celebrity entering the space, it's kind of easier to be noticed kasi you stand out, you already have that uh, branding and community inside. Kasi you know, parang ano, no? her, she's already her own brand, tama? tama ba, yes, Mars? yes. And marami na siyang exposure dito sa, sa media and Like, we, we all know na her brand is like crazy rich Asian, di ba? So, it kind of appeals to the market of crypto. So, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Right now, it's really hard to stand out. But I'm not saying na parang it's impossible. It really determines on how you build your community and your project. So, ayun lang. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about the price. Kasi it's, 
uh, it's really difficult to yes. say kung ano ba talaga yung dapat kasi it's an evolving market. Uh, mm-hmm. There's no, ano talaga, like, right price for it. Pero, yeah, speaking of um, price and ano, you mentioned about minting. Now, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, our regular audience, particularly those sa mga nanonood sa atin sa Bounce Back, may not possibly understand what does that mean? Ano ba ibig sabihin nung nag-mint ka? For example, you have an, a digital art that you created, Marso. So mm-hmm. how how does that work? How does the minting part works? Minting is actually like tokenizing your your digital asset. So parang vini-verify mo siya under this token. Let's say halimbawa um Intel Insight kasi or Google approve something something like that. So when it comes to NFT, uh the one uh you need to lie on is the token, let's say sa Ethereum. So you mint it under Ethereum means it's verified pero this minting process uh meron silang bayad di ba sa mga ano so there's capital involved no tama yes yes yeah. there's always capital involved with with crypto so yeah you, you need to pay for the gas fees yeah hmm. It's it's funny oh, yeah. that you mentioned the, the 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 gas fees and I think uh a majority of our audience here understands ethereum you know their gas fees is kind of high mm-hmm. but here but here's the thing that the audience should also know there's other blockchains out there that are very similar to ethereum and their gas um their their gas fees aren't that high the the mm-hmm. problem is is that ethereum takes more of the spotlight compared to the other um uh, emerging um blockchains uh, blo- blockchains that are mm-hmm. sort of similar to ethereum and i mm-hmm. think that's where people don't realize where to take advantage of it it's just knowing that there's other blockchains out there we'll get it we'll get let's, there let's discuss, in siguro, let's in discuss the that one slide oh, so magandang pag-usapan natin ngayong yung, yung ano yan eh. re- ako ang tingin ko uh, in my opinion the reason kung bakit um uh, ethereum was able to successfully pen ano um have the market yung dominance it's dominant in the nft market eh, is simply because it was first they were the standard and then second mm-hmm. um there's a lot of people already using ethereum ibig sabihin if you have a market if uh, si marso is an artist of mm-hmm. course you wanted to market her art pupunta siya dun sa marami ng gumagamit mm-hmm. which is relatively right now mm-hmm. is ethereum now let's now eto eto naman siguro I, I don't know if you will agree with me on this the reason kung bakit busy si Marso right now is actually creating her own community. So she, she's actually com- creating her own brand. Now, if, for example, the brand which is popular, sabi mo nga kanina, napagkwentuhan natin, um, just dropping, dropping but not, ano, no, uh, mis, uh, misquoting, si Heart Evangelista minted her own art. But what if Heart Evangelista minted it in a different blockchain? Mm-hmm. Would you agree with me? na mabebenta pa rin niya yan with a similar price if not close o di ba so what we actually need i think hindi yung blockchain ng problema eh. i think it's the community it's the accept- uh, more more accept- on awareness um, awareness oh, oh. yeah Mm-mm. so i think we have to inform our audience na hindi lang si ethereum yung blockchain na available now if there's a community of artists here like sa bounce back philippines na nanonood sa atin and they are a considerable number they can actually do a consensus na, oh, sa ano tayo magmimint? Uh, Tezos, like yung ginagamit ni Marso, for example. Or we can do it in Libra Codes, the one that Sly developed. Code developed. Not, not, not so, uh, yeah, uh, like, yeah. Yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> so, pwedeng ganun eh. Kasi, di ba, you, you understand where I'm coming from. I'm like, like the point that I'm driving at is, um, like most crypto community siguro, like most... Uh, crypto blockchain community babalik tayo sa ano eh um, what is palatable to the people kasi this is a people centric people oriented online no, no. platform that that is true i will agree with you that it's people centric because without um, the the people being part of this particular community you know there won't be the awareness of these nft projects but the one additional layer that i would like to input is the fact that since we're talking about multiple blockchains is the fact that the reason why i think ethereum takes the uh takes the uh the spotlight most of the time 
Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's because it's dominance factor. You can get it on any exchange on any swap. But when once people start to realize, hey, there's this blockchain called Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, uh, so on and so forth. And then people have access to that particular coin or token. And then they realize the benefits of it. Then it's like, well, I like Ethereum, but if I can mint cheaper here and the community number wise is still the same, I can still mm -hmm. benefit on this blockchain and I will still keep more of the profits for myself. Okay. The next part that I would like to mention is that a lot of the, um, since we, we, we talked about Rarible and we talked about OpenSea, is that these are very well known and wide pla uh, platforms. But let's keep in mind a couple things though. OpenSea uses mostly, I think, a, a, a theory, it's, it's mostly Ethereum based, yeah, purely Ethereum based. Rarible is the same thing, but what happens if they were to integrate within their own platform, let's say other blockchains, let's say Binance, Smart Chain, Polygon, so on and so forth, then we can start to see that, okay, um, it benefits the users, okay? But of course, everything still comes down to the people in the communities that can obtain these tokens to purchase up these NFTs. Yeah. So that's just my opinion. Yeah. And uh in 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 support to your opinion, merong comment dito no na isa it's it's not uh it's our uh, noteworthy. Sabi ni Christian Galban. ETH daw. Ethereum is anti paper hands. Ha? With with a ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> anti paper hands. Tamawa si Marcel. So do you do you agree? Do you agree with that one, Marcel? That uh, uh, Ethereum is actually anti paper hands. <laughs> hindi ko masabi. Marami yung alam na ano kilala na paper yeah. hands. <laughs> Nas Ethereum. <laughs> Pero uh, anyway. I would like to agree dun sa sinabi ni ni Sly. Uh, there are a lot of blockchains na mas nagikiter ng less uh, gas fees like solat na yes uh, BNB nagikiter din sila ng NFTs Tezos especially Tezos there are uh, clean NFTs so marami kong artists na kilala na they have this principle of being helpful to the environment so mostly maraming artists din dyan pero uh, it all comes down to your branding and community talaga uh, mostly ni mga tao nasa Ethereum dahil una ito yung pinakasikat and once na nagtanong ka sa ibang tao, like, sa ka nagko-collect ng NFT or sa ka nag-imit ng NFT, sinasabi nila lagi na sa Ethereum. One, kasi mataas ang value ni Ethereum. Uh, second, ito yung pinakasikat. And mostly, nandito talaga yung mga whales. So, there's an advantage and disadvantage naman dun sa token of your choice. Pero it all comes down to you pa rin kung saan mo gusto i-launch yung project mo. Kaya. Tsaka siguro yung marketing din, no, Mars, no? Would you agree? Mm -hmm. The yes, marketing so. uh, of the artist it's himself or herself. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, yeah, nabanggit yun. For the for ex, ano, example purposes na pagkwentuhan natin, Heart Evangelista is her own brand. There are also other premier artists out there naman for visual arts who probably would like to enter the space. They can also like have some same traction kasi they, meron na silang following eh. A challenge lang is most of the traditional arts and artists uh, not the artists, most of the traditional arts being sold. Eh, yung mga bumibili or yung patrons na tinatawag, hindi pa ganun ka maalam or knowledgeable with blockchain. That's the, that's the challenge of adaptability. But the good thing about it, we know for a fact that there are um, uh, tawag ito, mga art houses, art galleries, who are starting to dabbling into this one. Na, yeah, even physical art galleries, na they will actually mint the token to be represented in the blockchain para for easier sale kasi nga alam natin blockchain is international settlement is ano almost an instant almost let let me go note that settlement is almost an instant and that's the challenge for ano eh for most bidders ng traditional arts eh diba yung iba like i don't know if um you, you two were able to be in a in an art bidding na physical Alam natin, it's like, di ba, uh, when you go to an art gallery, the the art, the the bidding is like, sobrang, ano, let's call it mano -man, manomatic. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, mano, yeah, mano, yeah. bro. It's mano, mano. No. Na, na, now, if you put it in NFT, it will make the job easier kasi the highest, lowest bid easily be determined in the smart contract, di ba? Wait. Oh. There, there, there's one, th there's one thing you have to kind of now understand. 
and I'll try to keep this explanation as simple as possible. When you bid for an NFT, okay, under Ethereum blockchain, you run into a couple of issues where people, let's say a, a few people might have reached the bid amount, right? But then within the Ethereum blockchain, there is this one problem where somebody who put, or who has somebody who out there who bidded for the same item, put in a lot of money towards the gas. So their, their, their bid gets there first to the smart contract. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that there's an issue. So that, that's one of the problems with Ethereum. Now, Marzo mentioned that uh, Solana is, is out right now. It's, it's, it's coming out. The one great thing about Solana is that there is like this, uh, I forget the technological term, but it's the idea of um, if something is, like uh, if you're trying to bid for an object like a like an NFT, there is a queuing session. So whoever you know comes in in the queue first and that meets the bid gets it. So there's kind of like um, a sequence. Other than Ethereum, it's kind of like okay, who, who paid the most gas fees to reach the bid first? I've heard that there's no gas wars, uh, Solana. Yeah, yeah, true. nice, nice, true. Mm -mm. Which is actually good news for our artist, I suppose, because. Yan yung nagiging um tawag ito yung yung ano hindrance sa pagpasok ng most mm -hmm. uh artist people yan yung kanilang ano show stopper nila yan eh na ay ah, yung taas ng gas fees i can i do not own ethereum ethereum kasi device like the, sabi nga natin the most dominant in the space so if you don't have ethereum you cannot enter the space now with with all of this stuff we are discussing right now for the benefit of those who just watch on ano mga nakaka tune in lang we are discussing about other potential blockchain na pwede mong gamitin if you are an artist who wanted to enter the space. Now, we see Mars. I think her her blockchain of choice is Tezos. Now, we're discussing recently before um, we, we, we're creating it now is yung um, Solana. Kasi sinabi nga ni Mars, oh, there's no gas fees war in Solana. Ibig sabihin, that's beneficial for most artists. It will help a lot of artists who wanted to enter space, the space rather. Kasi nga hindi na hindi mo kailangan maglab, mag shell out ng ganong kalaki. Tama ba ako, Mars? Actually, ano pa rin ako, Ethereum bias. <laughs> Pero that, that's, ano, okay. I, that's okay. I, I, I would uh, suggest sa mga starting artists na if they would like to try the NFT space, is with Tesos talaga. Kasi una, mababa yung ano nila, minting fees, and mm -hmm. sobrang solid na community, ang daming mga artists doon na talagang tutulungan ka. Kasi when I started out, maraming nag-reach out sa akin ng mga artists na galing pesos. Unlike with Ethereum, grab yung, <laughs> yung kailangan mong mag-stand out dun sa crowd talaga. And it's, ano, yung fighting chance mo. You really have to market yourself well or kailangan mo ng contact with uh, other influencers. Mm -hmm. So, sure. yun. Hmm. Agree, agree, agree. So yeah, later, siguro, we will also try to, ano, no, to share in the audience, showcase yung iba sa mga works ni Miss Marso. No? But before that, and uh, siguro, bag, may, mga, may mga comments tayo mamaya na i-highlight. Before that, again, um, I would like to highlight that this um, broadcast is, of course, in partnership, none other than with our partner, Bounce Back Network. And with some of the sponsors that we have for today. So maybe before we uh, continue our discussion, let's just um, pause for a very quick break and uh, play this video.
All right, yun. And we are back for that very, very quick break. So again, this broadcast with Bounce Back Network and the Resistance Trader is brought to you by uh, our partners, Altash University. Altash University is actually an online university based in Chicago, but they're purely online. Um, they actually uh, teach about blockchain applications, blockchain as a technology, and even trading. And by the way, shameless plugging, no? uh, since I'm one of the faculty for the trading program of Altash University, will be opening uh, the Altash University's trading session by January. So you can visit our website, altash.university, so you can check the courses that we offer. And also, um, this uh, broadcast is in partnership with one of the exchanges, Bybit. So kung wala pa kayong Bybit account and you want to open an account, you can actually check out on the title, yun sa title page na tong broadcast natin. There's a link there where you can open an account. So yun. Thank you very much to our partners. Again, that's Altash University and Bybit. So going back to the discussion, so pinagkukwentuhan natin kanina, gas fees, etc. Now, si, siguro pag-usapan din natin further, since uh, nakwento ni Ms. Marso that um, diba, you need to create your own brand. Yan yung sabi niya. Kailangan mong palakasin yung brand mo. You have to create your community. Siguro maybe you can share, Ms. Marso, some tips and advice to those who would like to start a community. Doon sa kanilang mga, yung mga artists who would love to, NFT artists particularly, who would like to start a community and everything about that. Okay, uh, so kasi this is one of the crucial things uh, this NFT is yung uh, community building. So it's not ani, parang it's not enough na maganda yung art mo. You should have this philosophy, philosophical value na ibibigay at idadirect mo sa community mo kung saan mo gusto sila ipunta. Of course, magpipay for din dyan yung mga uh, incentives like mayroon airdrops or magagamit ba tong NFT na to, to something do you have a utility for this and that so it's kind of difficult to create a community pero ako as an artist I think you can create kasi artists are vis- vi- as a visual artist uh, it's re- the easiest way to create a brand or community is through creating content and we all know that content marketing is a strategy so as for me, I think that's one of the best ways, like uh, create a collection that uh, has this kind of value to the audience. And, you know, uh, people will invest on the content that you are producing. Let's say, well, if you're a photographer, you're into animals, of course, sino ba maging community mo, di ba? Mga animal lovers. So from there, you're building your brand and then you're going to put some incentives to it. Ano ba yung mga nila? Aside from from uh, investing because this is not any like uh, a one-time buying moment it's a circulation of investment so you need to have that reason kung bakit ka ba so support ng ng isang community di ba? aside from those values and pa ba yung makukuha na, na ng investors mo and to be honest uh, the crypto community is more of that financial gain let's admit that kaya tayo na dito sa crypto space kasi this is a billion dollar uh industry diba? that's why brands are entering in the space so um fr- from that from that uh, aside dun sa values na naibibigay mo ano may mga incentives yung main reason kung bakit kasi parang parang ito uh if you know prisoners dilemma or game theory it's not enough na parang you're just supporting the artist and i've met and heard a lot of artists uh a lot of groups na they're they're saying okay uh meron kang values dun sa means na ginagawa mo or it's purpose it's purposeful pero a lot of projects are being like that na sinasabi nila na projects na to is for a good cause for a charity pero what else as an investor what do i have aside from investing in in what you you are promising kasi at the end of the day, sabi-sabi mo lang yan, di ba? You can never really be sure if you're mo yung project, di ba? So, I think after that emotional uh, context and attachment dun sa investors mo, you really need to give them incentives, pahalagay mo yung community mo, and it doesn't hurt enough to engage. I think uh, the NFT space uh, brings you more closer to the community kasi what I've noticed within the these celebrities and brands that, na, kasi, 
itong NFT space, uh, it diminishes the hierarchy, the ego of of uh, the marketer versus versus the community. As you can see, na parang it's more real. Na parang uh, if you're engaging dun sa community more, na like, kipag connect ka talaga, kasi uh, you really feel like na it's true. Ako, that's just for me. Pero pero yun, uh, to create a community as an artist, uh, it's really still really difficult to stand out. And I think it will also help if you know people from the space that could help you. Kasi nga, you're trying to reach out. And with the market being so saturated, uh, it's really hard to find those people na parang would, would really look into your project na mag invest sa'yo. Kasi sobrang fast-paced dito na parang two days feels like one week dito as in. As in, ang dami nangyayari. Like every day, it's ADHD within these projects. So parang... Most people are here for the short run, but you will find people now will support you in the long run because they know your cause, they know the incentives that you are giving, and uh, you know the direction na kung saan mo sila ipupunta. So, so yeah. <laughs> Sana lang ako, parang ang dami kasi yung dami. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, it's really very, very, difficult. ano, very, tawag ito, um, insightful. Maraming, mm-hmm. marami siguro ang makupulot yung mga nanunood sa atin, especially those who are new to the space. Pero, uh, siguro bottom line, ano, nung sinabi din ni Marzo, just to support all of her, um, yung mga sinabi niya kanina, is uh, the community is, sabi niya nga, diba, you're shifting yung parang limelight from the marketer to the community. So, apparently, it's less short of saying, tama ba, correct me if I'm wrong, Mars, it's less short of saying, the community ang bida sa larangan na to. I mean, like, uh, for example, you as an artist, kahit gano'n ka kaganda, kagaling mag-drawing, for example, gumawa ng mm-hmm. art. But if the market or the people or the community does not appreciate those work, wala din. Like, similar to other platforms, di ba? Like, uh, yeah, online platforms, you need community to actually gain that traction, tama ba? No? Uh, so, yun. You need to have that value within your projects. It's not really enough because and daming magaling na artist dito eh. Ang dami ring magagandang projects. Pero at the same time, you will question na bakit sobrang ganda na itong artwork nito pero walang bumibili, di ba? Maybe it's your marketing. Maybe you don't have any reach. Maybe you can't find the right people who will support your values and your your projects. So, maraming possibilities kung bakit, aside from the market being so saturated, you really need to claw your way in para magkaroon ka ng no, no market. So, yun. Yeah. 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 So, yun. Siguro, that, that, that's um, more to that. But before we actually continue our discussion and proceed with the Q&A, highlight muna natin siguro yung, ano, yung isa, it, uh, a few of Marso's work. Pagkwentohan natin yung mga gawa mo. So, yes, Lai, uh, please do the honor yeah. of sharing. Yeah. Pagkwentohan okay. natin ng konti for the appreciation of our audience para makita nila. Para ma-appreciate okay. din ng audience natin buk- hindi lang kwentuhan yung ginagawa ni Marso. What does Marso work on and how does it look like? And then, yeah, let's do it. Pagkwentohan okay. natin. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Here you go. Screen one. Yeah, this one. All right. Yeah. So yeah, Marso, this one is actually a visual art created by you, Tama. Ah yeah. <laughs> uh-uh. So Uh-oh. um can you can you actually give us a bit of background and the story behind this art for the appreciation actually, of those who are watching yeah. us right now? Actually, that's a practice artwork. Cause before I had this project with Binance where I can collaborate with their I know NFT artist which was a singer. Uh, if you guys know Ali Young, nagpa-contest siya sa TikTok. <laughs> so, you siya yung nakakapag Ali Young. Ko. Oh. Yes, Ali Young. Pero uh, this was a practice. So, I just want to know if I really can do it. This artwork was inspired by a song of Billy Eilish uh Aliens uh Seeing the Crown. So, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So, this is a parang a song inspired art. Yes, dahil dun, English, sa, no? uh, dahil dun sa r- upcoming project ko with Binance na kailangan ko gumawa ng artwork relating sa isang song. So, yeah. I see, I see. So this is actually parang, this this happened to be your rough, 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 rough mm-hmm. draft. So, al- alam mo ba sa in, in, in the physical, yung parang ano, yung physical art? Yung mga rough, rough draft na ganito? 
would you or would you would you believe bini bini like for example if you're a visual artist a painter you painted something then you scrap it yung tinapon yung mga relatives ng mga sikat na artist for example they actually get those crumpled papers tinatabi mm-hmm. nila yon tapos palimbawa pag in the future they resell that and may may bumibili no mga sa uh, oh, uh, oh. ni artist kapag naging prominent artist na parang anything oh, like oh. kahit drawing pa niya yun nung bata it, ano siya naging legendary part of history yeah. na kasi siya yeah. itatago namin tong rough drop mo para meron din kaming <laughs> meron din kaming pwedeng ibenta ni slide okay? so let me do lang but it's a joke that, that's what we are saying trying to say lang na di ba artist with all of this stuff similarly like that kasi nga di ba parang I, 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 ano, I don't know if you will agree. Halos wala naman pinag-iba yan. Only that, most of the digital art is in digital. And mm-hmm. uh, yung, di ba, yung mga painter na kilala natin, yung mga traditional painters, they do it physical. But when you would like to cross that bridge or the gap between the physical and um, the, the digital um, aspect of the arts, Siguro yun yung maganda nating ano paano paano ba halimbawa may ako ay isang physical artist na nagpe-paint ng physical painting and I wanted to market my work in NFT. Mm-hmm. Ano ba yung pwede kong gawin about that? Actually, may mga lumalapit sa akin na galleries for that para nag-ask sila ng questions kung paano nila i-market yung uh, traditional artworks sa uh, NFT space. I think uh, it's a good utility kasi parang NFTs naman talaga it's meant to be used uh, real life utilities but uh, i think there's a barrier on how you're going to market because the most common problems within sa traditional at sa nfts is that paano daw kapag uh, hindi siya na benta at the same value as you are selling it sa mga auctions sa mga galleries so would it affect its um price or would it affect na parang ano tawag dahil parang prestige ba ng isang artist or ng artwork na parang nababawasan daw yung ano nila um, value nung, nung paintings. Mm, I got it. I, I get that one. Pero may question ako, Mars. Di ba ikaw naman magsiset ng presyo niyan so you can put a ceiling and a floor to it? Yes. For example. So yes. for example, if I I set, if I'm an artist with a physical artwork and I created a copy of that in the NFT, then I mm-hmm. wanted to kung hindi man at par Uh, malapit yung value. Di, pwede ko namang ilagay, di ba? I mean, like, uh, the, the asking and bidding, bidding price for that. Oo, pwede yung, any price that you want, you can put mm-hmm. dun sa artwork mo. Pero, the question is, will it sell? Kasi, you, di ba, you can't really uh, pull your audience inside the crypto space unless that they are interested in crypto. So, you have to build your audience inside the crypto space pa if you're not, if your audience are not there. So, it's mm-hmm. that gap between that mm. ano, traditional agree, agree. and NFT space, yeah. Pero what I noticed dun sa mga foreign artists na physical artists that went into um, the space, just to share, mm. no? Kasi I'm also, I'm just watching videos recently about this before. Para meron din naman akong maiaambag sa kwentuhan natin about the NFT space. So, meron ako nakita. May mga, like for example, yung uh, may sikat na artist for zombie, comics ng zombie. They actually specifically created uh, a zombie art and minted na special edition and minted it in an NFT. Daming ano, daming uh, interested and daming inquiry makikita mo sa nasa naka-publish sa Facebook to eh. I think it is um, part of the portfolio being marketed by well, hindi natin sponsor to pero for the for the benefit of education. Si crypto.com, 'di ba yung mm-hmm. nag-rename din ng stadium? They're into this eh. So meron isang sikat na zombie art, zombie artist in the US na um, pop culture artist siya. So ano yan, ano yan talaga like, drawing siya, comic, I think comic books and movies. Tapos gumawa siya ng special edition NFT art. Oh, well, ang dami pa ding ano eh, kahit siguro hindi interesado do- doon sa crypto but they are interested with the work of the artist. Tumaas yung ano, tumaas yung traffic ni crypto.com because of that. So mm-hmm. I think uh, I think tingin ko the barrier is just as much as a not a challenge but more of ano eh, more of a education. 'Di ba? Education uh-huh. lang yung nagiging barrier eh, ng mga tao. Eh. For example si like, si Marso kung biglang 'di ba sumikat siya and her artwork suddenly became became sa hit 
and um all of a sudden it's in demand even people well balikan natin si heart for for the for the purpose of discussion <laughs> marami ba sa fan fan ni heart evangelista marunong mag crypto i doubt i, doubt. I think i think uh, oo oh, oh, kasi diba? ano siya high class influencer I pero I mean, I mean, I mean, mar- mar- yung mga bumili nung ano niya, nung art niya, basically, hindi lahat yan, or nag, nag, uh, nag-tingin nung art niya, I think hindi lahat yan into crypto. Meron, mm-hmm. meron na dyan, may pera. So kung may ako, patron ako, may pera, gusto kong bilhin yung artwork ni Marso, I will just ask my staff or my office to actually study how to work on crypto. ba yeah. Para bilhin yung art mo. Uh, mm-hmm. And actually, there are some projects na parang they hire this artist outside na parang they don't have to interact with people kasi they have this marketing team for them. Uh, one good one is with Doodles. If you guys know Doodles, it's yeah. a very big project in the NFT space. And ako, fan ako ni Bertos. I known him ever since uh, 2014 pa. But I never really had the chance to talk to him. Doon lang sa mga marketing guys. <laughs> Yun nakakausap ko. Kasi this, within NFT space, you are closer to the person kasi you get to interact with them. Pero ako, I've never interacted with the artist. Also with Coolmans, uh, it's a new, actually, no? it's a new project wherein they showcase, showcase this uh, comic artist who is really prominent dun sa genre niya, which is mga cute cats and cartoons. Pero um, I never really get to interact with it kasi uh, ang gumagawa na ng galaw is yung marketing. You can really hire someone to do it for you and that would be easier pero it's costly. Yeah. I, I've seen uh, agencies inside the NFT space. It would cost around 3 million pesos for the lowest price of marketing. Because wow. they have to, aside from the marketing, they will hire influencers to share your, your project. And also, they have this mga strategies uh, pa to yung community and the activities na gagawin inside it. So, yeah. So, <laughs> if, if it's Again, just taking all the feedback in in our discussion, I think maybe uh, one of the barriers to entry really is just for the common user just to kind of like, like you said, like uh, there's there's a lot of marketing involved with the NFT space. And then, you know, mm-hmm. most of the users are down here, so they have to claw their way up. Problem is there's projects out there that throw a lot of money into marketing. Okay, so that's problem number one. That's really the barrier to entry. It's not really like... Um, yeah, I mean, having your own community is fine, and you should be part of several communities to showcase your work. But I think it's more like, you know, those, those with the, the marketing power, let's put it that way, kind of like outshine everybody else who's trying to show, you know, whatever work they're trying to show, which mm-hmm. kind of like what you mentioned before, kind of like when people try to reach out to the artists, they can't sometimes because you're just talking to, let's say their marketing team. While there are Mm -hmm. other really legit artists out there in the NFT space where you can actually reach out, but they don't get the same uh, uh, traction. Unlike the guys who have put a lot of uh, energy and money into the whole marketing aspect. Mm -hmm. Uh, Similar bro to to the physical art world then. Like, they they also do that eh, so mga art no no but that's that's true but i think I, I think for for people to really just adopt the nft um idea and the technology itself i think i the problem that i'm hearing from this discussion is more like you know what's in it for the the everyday people where do they mm-hmm. lie you know we have platforms like OpenSea, um rarible, rarible. And all, these are big, right right yeah. all these guys but even compete. Binance itself, they have their own Yeah, I yeah, know Binance NFT has their platform. own. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, everyone's mm-hmm. fighting for that attention. And that's the key word in all this, is the attention. But what I don't see is that they're... And probably they're out there. I don't I don't see them. But I think it's more like, what about the everyday people? How do they benefit? Are there projects for, like, uh, for them? Or is every project almost the same thing, where everyone floods this one platform and then everyone now is calling to the top to get that attention from everybody else just to sell their NFT work. You know? Siguro that's so, where utility is coming, coming in slide also. Like for example, <laughs> diba, NFT games. So, sure yun, may utility. Eh. Like if there are artists working for NFT games, they can actually sell their art. Well, pwede kasi may mga, diba? Well, let, let's talk Whoa. about again, going back <laughs> again. to, ano ba? Oh, again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this towards the end because I have a solution. 
okay. Sige lang, sige lang. But yeah, um what what I'm trying to drive at is there's there's always ano no question on hindrance. Um yung ano yung mga yung mga barriers to entry, 'di ba? Yung tinatawag natin. And um a lot of artists, most if not all will experience that unless you are a prominent name or a prominent brand entering in the space but the the solution however is for people to actually well this is what we're doing right now is part of the solution i i hope and i believe so because what we're trying to do here is we are trying to bridge the gap by actually informing the mass audience na hey uh, nft is out there you can enter and although it seems high valuing for most people or for some and probably expensive there are cheaper ways but well, yun nga yung pinagkukuwentuhan natin ngayon di ba and all boils down to sana maraming makakarinig makapanood and maka intindi ng pinagkukuwentuhan natin kasi yun yun slay eh. that's what you're trying to what's in it for ordinary people do um I'll, I'll answer that myself siguro slay for ordinary people If there's an ordinary artist, na, 'di ba may mga you, have you gone to the malls? Those uh drawing caricatures of you, for example, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you pay them 300 pesos, 400 pesos for a caricature. Now imagine if that cari- ano of if that artist actually does that inside the NFT space. I think it will actually more than double his potential income. Would you agree? Diba? So that's it. Eh. I think that's where the opportunity lies. Yes, there are some problems dun sa barriers to entry. Maybe there are some problems with possible capitalization. But yeah, based sa kwentuhan natin kanina, it can, these things can all be addressed. Eh. All boils down to, of course, mass adoption and education. Diba? I would re- really go more towards the education part because there's more to NFTs, the technologies, and how to make it really work for you when you understand the technology. But yeah. Yeah. Ayun. Ayun siguro. Now, at this point in time, pag-usapan na natin, um, kung may mga questions, well, we're still have, we still have a few time, no? Uh, for those who would like to ask questions from the audience, But before we actually entertain, let's check out the comment section. Let me check the comment section. And ayan, no, may shoutout tayo kay Miss Marites Perada. Ayan. Magandang gabi kay Miss Marites. No? Thank you for tuning in. And uh, there's, there's also, I see, meron tayong ano, viewer na very actively engaging sa atin right now. Si Christian Galban. Kilala mo, kakilala mo nyo ba to si Christian? He's actually... Um, saying that Solana has cheap gas pero bots always win daw. Well, for the benefit of those who are watching, yung bots, alam niyo naman, these are automated ano, no, personalities. Na no, that's nag-dig-dig. true. That's mm-hmm. true. But the thing is, you, the one thing you have to worry about Solana for now, um, I know, I think it just emerged just this year. Um, there is, Solana is a good project, don't get me wrong. Um, and the reason why uh, uh, The reason why uh, the gas fees is because of um, its blockchain consensus algorithm. I think it's proof of stake. But there's one thing about the technology of Solana that people have to watch out for. And it's something I kind of learned with EOS is that when people start spinning up their own, let's say, node, their own Solana blockchain. Yeah. It's the fact that if the we understand decentralization, if one node goes down, the other one will back it up. Right. But the way Solana is kind of designed right now is kind of like, it's the same concept, but if too many of them go down at the same time, it's like, okay, where's the blockchain? <laughs> so it's a new technology. You just got to watch out for that t- t- that type of thing because I think it was a couple of weeks ago, the Solana blockchain kind of went down and then they got it back up eventually, I think after an hour. But I just to keep things short, new blockchains need refinement. So even though they're great, let them refine themselves first, and eventually over time they'll do what they're supposed to do. But again, Solana is still a good project. Yeah. Thank you for that insight, Slime. Meron na meron dito isang question. I think this goes to Miss Marso. If, uh, if you if you if you may please. Sabi ni Jafet Alvarez, 
na try nyo na rin ba magbenta ng photo? So I think he's trying to ask us yung uh, photo, photography. Photo, like, yeah, photography. Yeah. Um, yes, merong mga artists na ang forte nila is photography. And yes, bumibenta naman siya. Pero it all comes down pa rin dun sa content mo. Like, ano bang klase yung photography? Some people prefer na parang um, landscape, mga animal. So it really depends. Pero... Uh, there's a certain struggle kasi within photographers kasi it's very common na parang you go to this place, mag-photoshoot ka and at some at some point may similar photographer in the same photo as you or same place. So that's kind of difficult. Some artists, uh, hinahaluan nila ng uh, multimedia or parang nag-drawing sila within those fo- photographs. So it really depends on your content. But I can say that anything is sellable in the NFT space as long as you know how. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. I hope and I hope that answers your question, Jafet Alvarez. So if you have other questions, please type in the comment section. Pero meron ng phone-in question kay Miss Marso. Merong nagtatanong, Mars, kung halimbawa they wanted to buy your artwork, how mm-hmm. can they possibly view it or access it? San sila pupunta? Uh, you can access it actually kahit sa Twitter. I have a link tree there na mag, mag-link sa'yo with OpenSea. So, most, actually, lahat na ng artworks ko nasa OpenSea right now, but I'm going to launch something in foundation. Wala akong new artworks or projects right now kasi I'm literally focusing sa uh, pag-learn, sa pag-observe, and sa pag-collect. So, uh, I think, uh, yeah, punta na kayo if you're interested uh, wala kayo sa Twitter ko, meron doon link to my open sea, my floor price is your sure, share natin yung ano mo, Twitter handle mo. Uh, share natin yung Twitter handle mo in the comment box siguro. Maybe okay. you can type it to the in our private chat para may broadcast natin to the audience yung Twitter handle ni Miss Marso for those who are asking paano nila ma-access yung art ni Miss Marso. But sabi nga niya, most of her art din daw is also available in OpenSea. Yeah, so all OpenSea. you need to do is to go to OpenSea and uh, uh, Mars rin yung ano mo rin, ano? Handle uh, mo doon, di ba? Yes, yes, yes. With the floor price yeah. of 0.07, eh, medyo mo, may mga nagpipaper hands sa akin, hindi niyo mahal. <laughs> <laughs> but, pero yun, now you can, guys, check it out. Right? But uh, if you're interested in something new, maybe I could lo- just launch around January or February. Say right now, I'm still yeah. observing and focus on collecting. I have no projects at the moment, but uh, still waiting for the uh, exhibit with Dead Fellas. If you guys know Dead Fellas, uh, I would have an exhibit with them. Also, uh, with you project called with Jonathan Mann, I think next year pa i release. So, uh, for now, yun lang muna meron ako. Uh, nothing, wala namang ganong personal new projects. Yeah. Pero, yeah. Ayan, we're, we're flashing in the screen right now. In the screen below, you can see her Twitter handle. So, you yeah, please follow si Miss Marso also on her Twitter if you are interested to check out her work so at this point in time before we actually do a wrap up well not unless may mga questions pampapasok let's check the comment section wala na pero yun nga um thank you very much miss marzo for gracing us with your presence this is actually our year ender for both the resistance trader and bounce back networks blockchain updates and blockchain for business pinag-isa na namin yung it's actually a, um, a separate broadcast. We have a, we used to have a weekly broadcast with our blockchain. Ah, no, no, our blockchain for business partner in Bounce Back Network. By the way, no, nakalimutan natin Sly. Shout out nga pala kay Mr. Sam Hakoba. He's supposed to be our uh, co-host for tonight. He's part of the Bounce Back Philippines or Bounce Back Network. Na siya yung ano namin, partner namin, our co-host for the blockchain for business. Kanina nakita ko siya is watching with us. No, no, he's still here, but shout out to you, sir, and get well soon. So the reason why he cannot join us for this broadcast is because meron siyang, um, he's trying to recuperate from allergies. So yeah, he just messaged me a while ago. So um, for those who are following si Mr. Sam Hakoba, he apologized for not being able to be with us tonight. But yeah, he will be with us soon. So we'll be relaunching also the uh, blockchain for business 
in the Bounce Back Network. And I hope by that time, we can again invite our good friend here, si Ms. Marzo, to again whatever, share whatever is the update in the space by that time. At saka, al- alam ko, nandiyan na, ready na yung uh, project niya. I mean, ready na, pwede, so nang, na. pwede nang i-plug. <laughs> Pwede na natin i-plug, no? Uh, freely yung project ni Miss Marso here in the show. Okay, so yeah, it's like you, you would like to say something, pa? Yeah, um, in in regards to with uh, with what Miss Marzo has discussed, um, eventually when we get to the segment where we can discuss uh, Bounce Bat Network in terms of uh, uh, NFTs and blockchains for business, um, I've taken a lot of what Ms. Marzo said in terms of the difficulties and the challenges and um, w- what's taking place with a lot of the people, you know, the everyday people trying to get into the space and make it work for them. You know, we, uh, w- with the help of the resistance trader team, you know, um, yeah, we got, we got a few announcements that we, we want to showcase. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get there. We'll, be, we'll be announcing here in the show dahil ito ang huling broadcast natin for 2021 for our page also. So yeah, yeah, go, bro. Uh, shots fired. Fire at will. All right, let, are we gonna do this? All right, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. So, ah man. So let me start off with this first. Okay. So just to let everyone know, the Resistance Trader, uh, which is basically a team right now, which includes uh, uh John here and me, Sly, and uh, three others. Uh, we, uh, the Resistance Trader has entered basically an Avalanche Hackathon. Okay. Now the Hackathon is one of those things where you know, uh, especially it's being sponsored by Morales. But what's gonna what's gonna be happening with this Hackathon is that the Resistance Trader team. We're going to be creating basically a blockchain application, right? Um, using the Avalanche blockchain network. Okay, so there's a lot of benefits to Avalanche. Um, uh, we'll get into that in a different thing. But basically, what this uh, this hackathon allows people to do is basically for free they can sign up for free and build uh, DApps, decentralized applications on the Avalanche blockchain. Now, there's a lot of things happening. Yes, there's money, of course, and also there's other bonuses. Okay, so we've entered into here. Now, one of the things, since we're talking about, um, you know, our partners bounce back network and, um, and what they do is that, um, we try to, uh, what bounce back network tries to do is try to inspire people who are like with the entrepreneurial mindset to get like, uh, to be educated in newer technologies and have those newer technologies basically benefit them, uh, usually in a financial or monetary type of situation where they can obtain new skills and move laterally in a different industry, such as blockchain, for example, because there's a big demand for blockchain developers as of this moment. Okay. Now, with that being said, you know, when you enter the blockchain space, there's there's hackathons out there. There's companies looking for people with uh, blockchain uh, de- developer uh, skills. Okay. And hackathons like these kind of like allow you to test and showcase your talent. So one of the things that we're trying to build that is very NFT related um, is basically we're trying to it's basically kind of like an NFT platform, but basically for like the everyday use. So let me just showcase what we're working on so far. Taking the inputs of Miss Marzo, which, by the way, I, w- I will say that a lot of the input came from her, was bringing down the NFTs down to a more of a personal level. Yes, we got uh, OpenSea, we got Rarible, things like that. Great platforms. The problem is, you know. What, how, how do we get how do we get it down to the user level, the everyday people, you know? Um, so why don't we create basically a dashboard? I know it's it's going to look like a wallet in the end, but this is just the prototype. So let me just show you what we're trying to do for this hackathon. Oh, before you actually continue, there's just a very very quick disclaimer that what we're showing right now are mostly prototypes. So yeah. baka baka kasi umasa yung ating mga viewers, but we just want we just wanted to show the possibilities kasi kanina nagkukuwentuhan tayo ng mga ginagawa ni Miss Marso sa art etc etc et et with the games etc but now here's a possible use case application for any business who would like to actually double into the space right okay, go ahead sir okay so number 1 uh, I'll show I'll showcase this one. Basically, it's like a user dashboard, right? Now, parang so, wallet yan, di ba? It's like a wallet, basically. It's just basically a wallet. So, what's great about it when you start entering the blockchain space, and I'll get to NFTs in a bit, okay? Is that number one, you're always going to create your own token, right? So, when you 
create your own token on whatever blockchain, whether it be Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, or Avalanche, it will show up here. Okay. Um, so what this basically wallet does is that when you create, let's say, um, your own token, basically Marshall you can transfer token, that. for example. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I did a few uh, earlier. Like uh, I created my own token, like EUSDT, Lupa, and DAP token, right? So you create that. It shows up here, and you can send it to whatever wallet address. Pretty simple, right? Okay. What if you want to get other cryptocurrencies out there, right? Depending on which blockchain that you want. Let's say someone out there wants to, um, let's say Ethereum, or maybe they want to get your token or whatever, you know, you can do a swap. So the swaps are kind of built in, All right? Oops. Okay. So the reason for swaps, what a lot of people don't understand is that these swaps, tokens or coins or blockchain cryptocurrencies, they represent projects. So you may have Ethereum, you may have Avalanche, you may have BNB. Maybe you want to swap it out for these other tokens, which are potential good projects and i'm i'm not saying everything is okay now one of the things i love about this wallet is because it has a built-in on-ramp for um, fiat to crypto <laughs> yeah and ibig sabihin, I, anong ibig sabihin I, nun? ano ang benefit nun for our viewers ibig sabihin niyan uh, those who would love to enter into the space will can easily do so Hindi na kailangan maghanap you don't pa need an ng, exchange yeah. you don't need none yeah. of that stuff if you want to buy it yeah. Again, um, what I like about this uh, this thing that I did here is that, um, let's say, depending on which cryptocurrency, I tried this last night, um, uh, you know, you can do it through credit card, but it depends on which cryptocurrency you want to buy. Instapay. Instapay is the common payment right now oh. here in the Philippines. Eh. Uh -oh. So yeah, pwede, oh, Instapay. Pwede na Instapay. It's built yeah. in, baby. It's built in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Uh, so the, the, the on-ramp is actually built into this and it works. Uh, balances. So when you create your own token, you know, you want to have fun. Maybe um, you have your own little private project out there and you want to, uh, you know, display that token. Of course, this is your token balances. Okay. Uh, transfers. Uh, this is basically, uh, you know, it's basically taking um, either scan and just put it in, putting it down here. That's all it is. Now let's get into the NFTs. Okay. Okay, so NFTs. So don't don't mind the gifts. These are just test NFTs. Okay. So one of the things that Miss Mars always says is, is more like, um, you know, we're always trying to claw our way. You know, people are trying to claw their way up to get the attention, especially on the bigger um, platforms. But what if the platform is actually the wallet itself, and you can just interact with, let's say, your friend, neighbor, your mom, your dad, or someone even close, right? So. This part I'm still building, but basically the idea here is you can transfer it over to another wallet address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth. You can also view it again on Etherscan. Okay. Just to know that it, it is an actual, you know, NFT. Huh? Uh, eventually I'll be integrating it over onto OpenSea and Rarible. Okay. Now, when it when that happens, I have this is what it's going to look like. This, what this does is that you can mint it over onto Rarible. And here's the thing, no gas fees. The only time gas fees are ever paid is when somebody buys it. So technically when you mint to Rarible, it's technically free. <laughs> okay. On top of that, you, um, on the code side, you can adjust the royalties. So whenever it gets resold by, uh, bought and then resold by someone else, that person gets the royalties of whatever you want to put it like 5%, 10%, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to do a little, test here test test and then let's just use this one for now i'm gonna sit oh wait not wait hold on i gotta be on uh i gotta be on rinkaby sorry i gotta be on rinkaby okay i am on rinkaby now so if i do this i should get a prompt there it is So I'm going to sign it, give it a few seconds, and I can view it on. And mind you, this is testnet, by the way. Okay, give it time. It's blockchain, okay? <laughs> yeah, Major, and I'm bear with us with the blockchain. Sometimes it takes. Uh, okay, alam na, so, mga... Yeah, so eventually it's going to load, okay? <laughs> it's going to load. Um, the same thing. Oh, there it is. So, boom, it's on Rarible, but on the test net, of course. 
Okay, so again, it's the idea of just bringing it down to the user end. Um, you know, the users need to have a lot of control. Now, here's a great thing about Rarible that I just found out, I think, two days ago. Uh, they accept video, by the way. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. And the thing is, I was dabbling into the idea of, oh, what about music? What about, but I, I thought to myself, you know what's more attractive than in an MP3? A music video. Mm. A music video. Uh, so let's do this. Test video. Okay. Now, test video. So I got to find it. Well, I don't have any videos right now, but it's the same thing, basically. Okay. Rarible actually accepts video. Now, you're saying to yourself, okay, but that's on a, that's on the platform. I mean, you, the people are still going to claw their way up. So why don't we create a platform for the people? Okay. So here, I created a platform for the people. And eventually, once I integrate it into here, this over here will be over here. Okay. So this is basically a very simple NFT mentor. That's all it is. Okay. And it's not going to Rarible. It's not going to OpenSea. But the idea is when you connect your wallet, your MetaMask wallet. Okay, let me go back to Robston. Okay. You know, when you create something, let's call it test. Test. We'll just do a price of one for now. Uh, let's just do not for sale. Choose file again. Let's choose the same file. Okay, this part right here, we're going to create it. Okay, I'm going to confirm the transaction. Okay. So, pwede this... mo rin i-mint din yung mga artwork, no? Like, for example, yung artwork ni, ano, ni Marso. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And what's... Once I get it integrated over here, basically, what's going to happen is eventually this artwork will show up. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. Hold on. But yeah, so let's take a look. So yeah, for the benefit of those who are watching, medyo bear with us because the blockchain still loading the data. Mm. Medyo matagal yung kasi di ba sabi nga natin the data is distributed to several ano um, blocks across the globe. So although it's relatively fast naman. Yep. The, the internet is pero yeah sometimes it takes a little more time especially if there are a lot of validations that that is involved yeah that's so, one yeah. of the things that blockchain kind of makes people kind of like uh cringe about that oh man the connection times things like that it's it's not showing well that's that's blockchain but eventually it depends on the framework or the uh the language that you use um eventually um over time, the frameworks, the programming languages get better, so that way it's a lot more quicker. Yeah, because what a lot of people don't understand really is that when it comes to blockchain, everything comes down to like state management. And if you're mm -hmm. a programmer, state management is, you know, um, kind of like think of it like a snapshot. Yeah. You know, what was the last? So frameworks kind of do that. Anyway, the point is once you mint on this NFT mentor, basically it will show up here. Now, the objective that we're trying to do right now is we're the objective of this base uh, of this prototype is basically, you know, what instead of, you know, you know, the, the problem is people have to sign up on the on, on online, sign up for an account, yeah, sign up for this, this and that. Um, and it, KYC and everything. Oh, right? yeah. So, it's like, why don't we just go straight to what we want to do? You know, that's that's the basic of buy the NFT. Or buy yeah, the, buy art, the NFT for example. Um, without without the needed barrier of okay, I gotta register my email, things like that, blah blah blah. You just boom, here it is. It's for you. Do with do with it with what you want. Yeah. So the idea really is to eliminate the barriers of uh, whatever blockchain you want to use, uh, whatever tokens you want to use, and you know basically getting the information that you need so you can make a wise choice in terms of how much you want to sell this uh, particular NFT uh, for whatever price that you want to sell it for, whether it be an ETH, Polygon, Avalanche, Bin or BNB. So, yeah. Yeah. Sounds, sounds cool, bro. So, yeah. 
watch out for that guys kasi ito yung project that we are working on so i hope you guys are excited as we are and i'm um, looking forward that um upon the um uh, tawag ito completion of the you know the hackathon this will come into fruition into something that will help the likes of sina miss marso and those who would like to enter the space any comments miss marso kanina ka pa nakaka-smile baka baka you wanted to say something about what we just showed you um uh, well no man pero yeah you, you guys can check the i don't know man <laughs> wala ko sa story. <laughs> it's okay it's okay go ahead go ahead <laughs> so uh if you guys are interested with like, nfts you can guys check it out my uh link to my twitter as i've said before i don't have any projects at the moment but uh if you just want to say hi or if you have any questions i'm open to man soon i will also release an faq for my for my website para lang since sa mga nagtatanong about NFTs also we have NFT Philippines para sa support with artists kung gusto nila matutunan kung paan at and meron ng ano uh serve discord server for collectors as well yeah. dito sa NFT Philippines so if you we, we will put those links in the comment section comment box so yeah you can drop a dm to miss marso using the handle that we just showed you a while ago mm -hmm. that's twitter.com slash marso underscore 63 so yeah yes, Follow yes. Rin pala kami. shameless plugging the resistance trader <laughs> t the resistance trader t3 is our handle so yeah follow us on twitter also so we'll follow you back guys Ayun, ayun okay. lang. so if there are no more questions in the comment section i think that's it. Ayan, we're flashing it again. Um, Twitter ni Miss Marso. Okay, yeah, pabati you, daw. Shout out kay Kevin Kevin Cortis. Sabi ni Carlo Joshua. Pahabol. May mga Hi. pahabol tayo ng mga... No, pabati daw, madam. May mga fans mo nanonood sa atin ngayon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning with us. And yeah, don't forget to follow this page, no? And uh, uh, put that ring button. Uh, click that ring button rather para lagi kayong updated if we will be doing contents in the future. Hold on, before we go, guys. Before we yeah. go, guys. So it did show up. It just takes time. <laughs> it took time. It took time. <laughs> yeah. So this is the NFT sample NFT art by Lupa Token of none other than Mr. Sylvester here. Again, yeah. that, that's how it works. So nagmint siya ng token niya. Yan yung, yan yung, yan yung process ng pagmimint ng token, oh, guys. So, yan. Pinakita lang ni Sly how to mint the token. And that's it. So, again, thank you very much to Miss Marso for tonight's broadcast. And also would like again to thank our partners. Um, of course, the Resistance Trader community, um, Alpash University, Bounce Back Network, and last but not the least, Bybit. Again, for those of you guys who doesn't have a Bybit account, you can check out in the comment box the link where you can sign up. And that's for free. All right. So, that's it for today for this year for trt i hope you guys were able to enjoy the, tonight's broadcast maraming maraming salamat and hoping to see you again next time thank you guys bye. thank you thank you goodbye bye guys